We blew, we blew a, a lot of engines up. Yeah. Uh, I've lost count of how many, I think we might have blown up 30 engines, or, uh, that's a lot. Remember when Elon Musk was first setting up SpaceX? He visited the test site and one of his experienced engineers told him, engines blow up and damage test stands and all development stops while the stand is repaired. He thought for a moment and said, let's build two stands then. <laughs> well, only Elon Musk who has a unique direction on things, right? As a result, SpaceX now has nearly 20 test stands and the company's always ready to blow up a Raptor at any time. But we wonder why Elon Musk burns so much money on the engine and makes it explode. Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech Chen. While SpaceX's headquarters and factory in sunny Southern California get a lot of attention, most of the noisy, dirty, and critical testing work is done just outside this small central Texas town nestled in amid the farm fields. Yes, SpaceX manufactures all its rocket engines and thrusters at their Hawthorne headquarters, but each must pass through McGregor, where the company tests each new engine off of the assembly line as well as those being developed for future missions to orbit and beyond before each one can be used on a flight mission. McGregor, like many small towns in Texas, located just south of the once anonymous town of Crawford and McGregor High School's football stadium, it features a fair amount of seating for a town of less than 5,000, but there's one thing McGregor residents experience that's unlike any other Texas town. Every so often, its inhabitants hear and feel the rumble of rocket engines as the air around them pulses, courtesy of one of the biggest employers in town. And SpaceX is expanding. We're building more test stands because we're ramping up production because we have this big manifest in front of us, says SpaceX spokeswoman Kristen Grantham. Extensive and repeated rocket engine testing is key to increasing reliability and thereby mission success while lowering an operating cost for SpaceX. In 2003, the company leased the McGregor testing facility of the defunct Beale Aerospace on land formerly used for World War II Blue Bonnet Ordnance Plant, where it refitted the largest test stand at the facility for the Falcon 9 engine. SpaceX has made a number of improvements to the facility since purchase, and they've also extended the size of the facility by purchasing several pieces of adjacent farmland. The area to support the test facility was initially 256 acres, but by April 2011, this more than doubled to over 600 acres. With only three initial employees on site, the facility grew to over 140 by late 2011. As of March 2015, the facility compromised 4,000 acres with 12 test stands, and it had run over 4,000 Merlin engine tests including some 50 firings of the integrated nine-engine first stage. In May of 2016, the McGregor City Council instituted some more restrictive rules on rocket engine, rocket stage, and low-altitude flight testing. SpaceX has not commented publicly on how the new rules would affect testing operations or whether they will be evaluating other locations that they might conduct such testing. The first scaled methane-fueled Raptor rocket engine manufactured at the Hawthorne facility in California shipped to McGregor in August 2016 for development test. In 2019, SpaceX began refitting the original vertical test stand at McGregor. Previously used for testing Falcon 9 booster stages and second stages starting in the mid-2000s to be a vertical test stand for Raptor rocket engines to add test capabilities not present in their multiple bay Raptor test stand. Rocket engines designed for many uses, tested constantly in horizontal test stands with a gravity gradient orthogonal to the turbine pumps, have somewhat differing wear characteristics on the bearing surfaces, which increases wear on startup and shutdown. In July 2021, SpaceX announced they would be building a second production facility for Raptor engines, this one at the McGregor 4,280-acre facility. The facility would concentrate on the serial production of Raptor 2, while the California facility will produce Raptor vacuum and new experimental Raptor designs. The new facility is expected to eventually produce 800 to 1,000 rocket engines every year. That's approximately two to four per day. Now back to our main subject, how often is SpaceX actually testing Raptor engines? According to Reagan Beck of NASA Spaceflight, seems that engine test activity rarely ceases at SpaceX McGregor. Another roar was heard beginning with a big boom, then dropping down to the more smooth low tone, including a few subtle up and down throttles. 
In fact, the number of tests changes substantially from day to day, but most days usually have at least three Raptor tests. Notably, many tests were seen to end in an explosion. An RUD, or Rapid Unplanned Disassembly, occurred on May 9th. The Raptor engine managed to work for only four seconds on the vertical stand of the SpaceX test complex near McGregor, Texas. The second clap was heard less than a day later, already on the horizontal stand and almost immediately after ignition. The company does not comment on the incidents in any way. They became known to the public exclusively thanks to the round-the-clock online broadcast of the NASA Spaceflight Cosmonautics fan team. Near the test complex in McGregor, the cameras of the community appeared less than a month ago and have already brought a spectacular catch. By the way, the NASA spaceflight team is doing a wonderful job. If you're a space fan, don't forget to follow them. Now, let's explain about this explosion. Honestly, since there's still no explanation for the incidents from the company's reps or Elon Musk himself, all possible versions are just speculation. The most likely option is we just witnessed SpaceX's proprietary approach, according to which each new development is tested to its limit. Now work is underway on the second version of the Raptor engines, serial copies of which have already demonstrated the ability to produce about 230 tons of thrust. In the future, this indicator should grow by another 2-10% to 10 due to an increase in the pressure in the combustion chamber significantly more than 300 bar. Achieving such high values requires engines to work at the limit of the capabilities of the materials and technical solutions used. Probably the engineers have found weaknesses in either a milestone beyond which they can't step or a direction for further improvements. In favor of the normality of what happened is the fact that work at the landfill in McGregor continues at the same pace. The number of tests does not even think to decrease, which is convincingly proved by the publicly available online broadcast. On the other side, this could also be an accident, especially considering the unusual color of the smoke cloud after the explosion. The company is now preparing for the first orbital launch of its new reusable rocket and space system, Starship, and it needs engines, 39 pieces, for the first and second stage. Therefore, the burning of the Raptor 2 is going at a Stakhanov pace, and two explosions at once indicate the units are not fulfilling their task. The idea is that in preparation for such an important event, which will be followed by the certification of the rocket for regular launches, no one will waste resources on experiments with less urgent developments. Anyway, many of these failures happen, therefore, simply because Raptor is a new thing trying to do unusual things. And only real tests can give them lessons and success. And that'll about wrap it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section, because your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.